everyone. How many of you have some irrational phobias, some fears? I will admit that I have a fear of chickens. So does that make me have poultryophobia? So show of hands, how many people are afraid of spiders? No? Even that one? How about fear of snakes? Oh, yeah. Yes, you have ophidiopia. Isn't that cool? Snakes are your friend. And then how many have fear of heights? Kind of. Kind of? Yeah. All right, now this is truth telling time. How many of you are afraid of public speaking? You have glossophobia. And psychologists say that it is feared even more than death. No one has ever died of embarrassment. You just wish you could. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Amy Lockman. I'm a professor here at Florida Institute of Technology. I teach communication and I teach video production. I have been here for five years, have been teaching for over 10, and before that I was in the corporate world where I went out and I pressed the flesh and glad-handed people. And it was a great experience because communication is essential. So today we're going to cover three areas. And the first one is building the speech. The second is building self-confidence. And the third is relaxation and warm-up. So employers are looking for people who are good communicators. They're looking for what we call soft skills. And it may not matter to an employer that you are well-educated, a genius, a leader in your field, if you can't share your information. You need to be able to talk to your peers, you need to talk to your boss, and you may want to get a date one day. So communication is quite important. The way to get confidence and to build your strength in fears of speaking is to have a framework. We live in a very, 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 very busy time and people have short attention spans. I'm guilty of it. I look at my phone, I look up, I look down, look up. So you need to be aware that people are distracted. So this is the four-step foolproof method that Amy Lynn Lockman has perfected. Tell them what you're going to tell them. Tell them. Tell them what you told them. Tell them what you want them to remember. One day I'm going to have that tattooed somewhere. <laughs> tell them what you're going to tell them. Tell them. Tell them what you told them. Tell them what you want them to remember. Has anyone ever tried to bake a cake without a recipe? It never turns out well. Right. So this is a basic framework for speech, but this is the recipe. So you don't want to overload your audience, so you keep it simple, narrow your topic, and I beseech you, I plead with you, use an attention getter. Every time I hear this, a little part of me dies. Hi. Today I'm going to talk about the American Revolution. It was a fascinating time in America. Does anybody want to hear that speech? No. Heck no. No. So, how do you get their attention? Attention getters. Start with a quote. Like I did, start with a question. You can start with a shocking statistic. You people love statistics here. An appropriate joke. Know your audience and have it tied to your topic. You can make a sound, movement, role play, or an anecdote. A simple story. If I knew the difference between an anecdote and the antidote, my friend would be alive today. It's a Ron White joke. It's not original. So let's go back. You need to tell the people what you're going to tell them. There's your preview. Point one, keep it simple. Then you do a transition. Think about how you write. You don't just want to go from A, B, jump cut. 
You want to have smooth transitions. So if people are taking notes, they know that, oh, that's another bullet point. Then you're going to do point two, another transition. Point three, a summary. Tell them what you're going to tell them. And then a snappy conclusion. That's all I got. No, stand up there, tell them what you want them to remember, look them in the eye, soak in the applause. And you can tie it back to your introduction. So if you started with a quote, end with a similar quote. And you have a two all beef patty special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onion on an intro and conclusion tasty speech sandwich. Well, you've got that, let's move on, moving on. Let's start talking about gaining self-confidence. I am above the age that I should, I should have total confidence in myself. But I would be lying if I didn't have a negative tape in my head. And that witch needs to shut up. She tells me awful things. You're fat, you're ugly, you're never going to be anything. You're fat, you're ugly, you're never going to be anything. No, I would never tell that to a friend. So why do I tell it to myself? So when you have that internal tape of, I can't do this, I suck at this, I'm not good at this, I can't do this. Well, would you tell a friend that? No, you would build that friend up and say, Victor, you can do this, man. Alexis, I believe in you. You have all the talent and all the will, and you are rehearsed. Which brings me to prepare. I have been speaking since I was about three, but you notice I have notes. I am not reading from my notes. I, am, I have rehearsed. I know that I need to do that. Think about anything that you started rough. Take driving, for example. 10 and 2, looking down the road, check the mirrors, look here, look there, look here, look there. Turn the radio down, because you have to concentrate, right? Well, I've been driving for 40 years now. One elbow out the window, my knee driving, changing the CD, maybe putting on my lipstick. It's just second nature, because you practice, practice, practice. So, as Yoda says, fail you will if practice you won't. I can't stress that enough. It's muscle memory, too, that if you say something enough and you feel yourself doing it and you picture yourself in the room, then you are going to be much more confident. Procrastination, hi. I was going to start a procrastination club, but I just never got around to it. Right? Procrastination kills confidence. Practice, practice, practice. Now let's move on to a relaxation technique. And a lot of what you're feeling is anxiety and adrenaline because we are just animals. We are just a click above chimpanzees in my estimation. I kind of like chimpanzees better, but that's okay. I don't know you well enough. But what happens is we have that fight or flight reflex. That adrenaline is coursing through your body. So I still get nervous. If I weren't nervous, that should be a sign. Get off the stage. You don't have passion for what you're doing anymore. Use that energy. Think about actors, entertainers, athletics, athletes. I teach speech, I just can't speak. Mm -hmm. And adrenaline can be your friend. But you also have to know how to curb that physical manifestation of it. That I, all the uh, moisture in my mouth has gone to my hands, basically. Mm -hmm. I got a little bit of the stanky leg. I tend to move around a lot, and my worst is I get going as fast as I can because I think if I just get it over, then it won't hurt so bad. It's like the Band-Aid. Right. I know that I have all of those things, but you probably don't know that. You can't see it. 
you don't know because I appear very cool. Indeed. I know. So what we're going to do is align your body. This is your instrument. Those of you who um, are athletic or dance or do yoga or just generally have an idea of how the body works, that without breath, there is death. You need to breathe. And when you get nervous, <laughs> you, sh you, you put it up here in your chest, and then your heart starts beating, and then it just gets worse. So what we're going to do is sit up on your sit bones, and you're going to put your ears over your shoulders, your shoulders over your hips, and you're going to sit up tall. So feel that spine elongate. <sighs> just take a couple of in yawn. That's a good one. Nice. <sighs> Let your head and neck and shoulders just relax. I take a lot of my stress in the shoulders. But this is good before you do anything, even a speech, a test, whatever it is. But you're just going to let your hands sort of feel relaxed. All right. So now you're going to ball your fists up and squeeze your shoulders up. Inhale, exhale, shoot it out. Inhale up, inhale up, all right. Now we got everything sort of warmed up. I want you to picture your favorite color, favorite color, and let that color become the oxygen in the air that comes in. So what you're going to do, if you can, close your eyes. If you don't, that's fine too. But you're going to inhale, filling your lungs from the bottom to the top, and let that color intensify. So inhaling up, exhaling, almost as a sigh. Easy breath in, exhale down. One more time in, filling the lungs. Exhale down, pressing the diaphragm, letting all that roll. Now bring your chin to your chest, roll your head down. Let your head become heavy and just roll down to the table. Don't let your head hit. Just stay down there for a second. Breathe naturally. Now a big inhale and you're going to stack one vertebrae on top of each other. That tall, open chest. Breathe. Inhale. Shoulders down, exhale down again. This time stay down there if you want to put your hands on your lap. I want you to imagine a place that you are most comfortable. It could be the beach, the woods, your lazy boy, wherever you are comfortable. You are at absolute peace. You are feeling like you are on top of the world. Notice the sounds, the smells, the tastes even. Really notice how your body feels, inhaling and exhaling the whole time, breathing naturally. Now go outside of your head and look down on yourself as if you were watching a long shot of yourself in a movie. Look around, see the environment. If it's dark and the stars are sparkling, notice that. Look at that happy person, just chillaxing, just absolutely confident. Oh, inhale, exhale. Now go back in, and you are back in your head again, and picture yourself at the speech spot or the test, or a meeting, or the interview, and you're still calm, relaxed, you're breathing, you're confident because you know you're prepared, you know that nobody really wants you to fail, they're on your side. Now inhale, coming up, you're in this room, open your eyes, and your blood pressure should have gone down. Your anxiety should have gone down. So, you know you're doing your best. Give yourself a pep talk. 
Don't listen to that evil voice in your head. I often put people on my committee that like me and love me and let them tell me nice things. I hear my daddy saying, oh, sugar babe, you can do this. My dance instructor, Ray Dell McFarland, Amy, go out there and smile. <laughs> my French teacher, oh, mademoiselle, vous êtes très, très gentille. You're so lovely. That other voice, they don't have room at my table. Let's, shall we go back? and do some vocal exercises. No presentation is complete without manatees. <laughs> you gotta love the sea cow. This is your instrument. This is your diaphragm. What happens is, especially women, get really breathy, and you need to think about putting your voice down into your chest and supporting it with your diaphragm. So these are things that will help you get used to using your diaphragm. We're going to be Santa for a minute. We're going to go ho, 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 ho. Feel that? Your fingers, I've been holding my stomach in since 1972, so this is hard to do. So ho, 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 <laughs> that was just my practice being my evil laugh. That was just for me. So now you're going to just warm up. Just you're going to let your mouth get loose. Just everything loosen up. So now then. You're going to do a little tongue twister, and this is always good. Red leather, yellow leather. Here we go. Red leather, yellow leather, 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 red leather. Yeah. So now you're all warmed up, and your tension in your jaw is pretty gone. But if you're like me, you still have that tension in your shoulders. So this is a, there's a great exercise therapist called Feldenkrais, and his theory is that you can control your body. It doesn't have a mind of its own, you have a mind. So take your hands out in front, you're gonna clasp your hands together. Notice which thumb is over. Mine is, tends to be right. All right, now squeeze, 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 feel that? Now release it. Now do it the non-habitual way, the opposite way. That should feel kind of strange, right? But you're in control of your body. You are in control. Apart, habitual way. <laughs> I couldn't do it. And apart, the non-habitual way. Well, I feel like I am much more relaxed. I feel confident because I know that I have a good outline. I know that I have rehearsed. I know that the audience does not want to see me tank. I don't have anything against you. You don't have anything against me, I hope. But keep in mind, People are there because they want to hear what you have to say, and you have something to offer. Your voice is important. Your information can make the difference to people, and you are confident. Should you try for perfection? Heck no, perfection's boring. People will stumble, people will stutter, does that make you less of a person? No, it just makes you human. My theory is just keep going. Just keep going. As Dory says, just keep swimming. Well, just keep talking. Just keep talking. Well, this brings us back to the beginning where phobias are 
an irrational fear. We have hopefully put those fears aside. And Jerry Seinfeld, an American comedian, had an interesting thing to say that according to most studies, people's number one fear is public speaking. This means that to the average person, if you go to the funeral, you're better off in the casket than doing the eulogy. Crazy talk. Here's my information. I am available for consultation. I am available to help you craft a speech. I'm in my office Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So if you want to come see me, I'm usually having a healthy lunch, but that's okay. <laughs> and I'm there, and it's a luxurious office, so don't hate me because I have a closet. And uh, I, I am here to help if you need help. Yes? Do I or can I? Well, do you? I have in the past. Right now, we have a professional um, marketing person doing it right now, okay. and she's quite good. Do you have to take SciTechCom, though, probably? Um, I'm in business writing right now, but I have an elective, and I'd like to take a speech class. OK, that's great. Yeah. SciTechCom is a lot. Of, I make it more presentation mode, and then communications for executives is much more presentation mode because you have business writing. So if you need to take those, it's COM 3070 is communications for executives and science and technology is 2332. What she said. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I have had some pretty embarrassing moments in my life. And like I said, I didn't die. I just wanted to die. I live to tell the story, and they do make good stories. So how does your, Victor, how does your speech anxiety manifest itself? Sometimes I go blank, mm -hmm. uh, and I sweat in my palms, mm -hmm. and I feel my heart beating grow too, too, mm -hmm. too, too fast. Well. Do you think that that will help you, the, the calming, the med medication, the meditation? There's always that. <laughs> yeah. And practice. And I always have such admiration for international students because you are speaking in your second language. And I, you know, I had the hubris of an 18-year-old when I went to international school. And I thought I spoke perfect French. <laughs> I showed up and I basically got lost for the first 10 days I was there. And I, I got better. Practice, practice, practice. So you know the joke is, what do you call someone who speaks two languages? Bilingual. What do you call somebody who speaks many languages? A polyglot. What do you call someone who speaks one language? An American. <laughs> so have confidence in knowing that you're doing something that many Americans can't. So I, I, if I had a hat, I would tip it to you. So. All right, well, thank you very much for your kind attention.